Part 1. White Clouds. Lone Moon. To War. Together, the people of Fodlan relish the beauty of the brilliant moon overhead as another year ends. They recall sad partings and new acquaintances alike, but each person must still walk their chosen path alone. With each day, the presence of spring grows stronger, and yet a lone moon still haunts the sky, a silent reminder, perhaps, of some inescapable truth. Unforgivable! I cannot fathom that the Adrestian Empire would embark on such a violent course of action. The fault is my own. I failed to see the wickedness within Edelgard's heart. There is no question on that front. She clearly wishes to conquer all of Fodlan. And in order to achieve her own selfish ambitions, she plotted with ill-meaning strangers and defiled the Holy Tomb. Or perhaps her ambitions are even grander than we know. Perhaps she is planning to make herself a false deity by demonizing the Church of Seros. Adrestia received its very name through a divine oracle. To injure the goddess is a sin most foul that shall not be forgiven, nor forgotten. We must stop the Empire, and quickly. I have returned, Rhea. Welcome back, Shamir. Were you able to discern the Empire's movements? Their main troops are marching towards Garrig Mach. It is said that they will join forces with Edelgard's army and arrive within two weeks. Two weeks? That is not enough time. It will require all of our efforts just to prepare our defenses before then. We must send notice to all surrounding villages at once. We must order the residents of Garrig Mach to flee for their lives. It will be done. Professor, listen closely. If our enemy invades the monastery, I will have no choice but to stand upon the battlefield. If something happens to me, I am entrusting my sacred duties to you. You must have guessed it by now. The truth of who you are. Or perhaps I should say, your lost memories are surely beginning to return. I have acted all these long years as a mere proxy for you. But the duty is yours, and yours alone. Only you can lead the people of Fodlan. Rhea, please. You must tell me all that you know. I beg of you. That one is the progenitor god. Am I correct? In a sense. Our dear professor is a vessel, one who carries the power of the progenitor god within. In time, the vessel will become one with the power contained within, and the progenitor god shall return to this world. I see. I trust that you are aware of the questionable nature of this experiment. But I suppose there is no turning back. I ask that you help our friend. And in doing so, help her. I am waiting and hoping for the moment when our creator rules this wayward land once more. I understand. As ever, I will take you at your word. Lady Rhea! Brother, I will do my part as well. Flame! Were you eavesdropping? Regardless, I am glad to hear it. You owe your life to the Professor, after all. And in the end, they may prove to be our brethren. You have my gratitude, Sedith. And you as well, Flane. 
As followers of the Progenitor God, it is up to us to see our mission through. working hard. I guess even the strongest fighters can't neglect their training. At it again? Or is she still at it? Oh, a spectator. If you want to ogle, you ought to be a little less conspicuous. Sorry, I didn't mean anything by it. I was just passing by. I couldn't help but wonder, though. Have you been training all this time? Yes. I'm simulating prolonged combat. Fighting for a long time requires a whole different set of skills. If you can't handle it in training, you'll certainly be doomed against the real thing. I can't even imagine having what it takes to keep that up for so long. You want to be a mercenary, right? You should at least try to imagine. A brutal, protracted clash in open marshland, neither side retreating. In that situation, what will you do? Your survival depends on decisions you make in the moment. I see why you're so successful. Most importantly, don't give up. Don't start thinking about how you might lose or might die. Focus on surviving, on winning. You're right. I've been narrow-minded. I decided, since I don't have a crest and can't use relics, that I'm powerless against someone like you. But that's wrong. I'm not helpless. Not as long as I'm breathing and on my feet. So, the first thing I'm going to do is learn how to beat you. When you're unarmed, at least. That's the spirit, Leone. Though I'm not planning on losing either, you know. Good. I hope you're ready. Because I'm going to train even harder than you. You remind me of myself when I was young. I would become so angry at my own weakness. I feel strangely nostalgic seeing that same anger in you. Huh? Where'd that girl go? We start tomorrow! must protect Gerig Mark. Defiling the Holy Tomb was a sacrilege. I will not allow such a thing to happen again. The Archbishop has already given you a new responsibility. I want you to rise to that honor. I have something to ask of you. To think Edelgard was somehow connected to the captain's murderer. Well, perhaps it's pointless to get upset about the past. My duty now is to prepare for battle. We're depending on your strength, Professor. Crush our enemies. Captain, I hope you're watching. We will protect Garrick Mark. The Holy Tomb held many crest stones. This is the first time I've heard of crest stones being hidden away in such a place. 
But more importantly, I'm interested to know the Empire's aim. Why would their army desire crest stones? There is power there, yes. And yet, I must think on this. The crest stones lie at the heart of the events surrounding Conan Tower and the chapel as well. And of course, the crest stones somehow transform those traitors and their captives into demonic beasts. Could that possibly be their aim? The Empire's army may well plan to use crest stones to create demonic beasts. mind behind the attacks on the monastery was Edelgard? Wow. Doesn't make much sense though, does it? There would need to be all sorts of territories and groups tangled up in this sort of mess. <sighs> I'm gonna stop. I don't really have the head for this political stuff. Mostly I'm worried about my old opera company. I wonder what's happening in the capital right now. I hope they're safe. herself the Flame Emperor was connected to those strange beings. The Imperial Army might be using even more terrifying methods than we know. You had better be cautious, Professor. Any amount of carelessness might prove to be our undoing. Any new changes to report? With the Imperial Army drawing near, it is most vexing that we cannot relax and converse as we once did. Thankfully, you have the divine protection of the Goddess on your side. Please try to listen carefully for her voice. May the Goddess's voice reach you. they threaten the goddess. Such a vile act cannot be forgiven. There is no need to worry, I promise you that. Divine punishment will surely fall upon them. <laughs> in the days of yore, the goddess would grow angry with such insolent fools and roast them in ALL.
I'll have that girl's head. Just you wait. Yes. I guess we have no choice but to fight, have we? Oh, but why would Edelgard do something like this? I'm sure we'll be all right, though, Professor. The goddess will keep us safe. someone who is willing to turn their back on the world just to uphold their own beliefs I've spent my whole life running in fear and now I surely we can win if we rely on each other right professor <sighs> professor war is breaking out again is it not? An honorable notion. Do you think there is something to be done? Whatever shall we do? I never wanted another war. All we can do is steal ourselves for the fight ahead. Need something? See you again soon. Hello there. Those who serve the church must cast aside all selfish desires and devote themselves fully to their beliefs. But is it right to wield piety as a weapon? I have never considered such things before. The church, I... I have always done what I thought best to save the people of Fodlan. My job to protect Lady Rhea. I've got to do it, and I got to do it as best I can. And if that means I got to die for her, then I will. Uh, how could Edelgard treat Lady Rhea like she's the bad guy? She's never been anything but nice to everybody. 
I just don't get it at all. power struggles, still. It has been hundreds of years since all of Fodland was consumed by war. I didn't actually think it would come to this. I feel as though I'm not in my rightful place. I cannot protect the things I should. Professor, if I survive this war, I wish to return to my homeland, to the land of my king. We're falling behind. I don't know that we can keep up with the new Emperor. To think that she was able to raise an army of that size right under our noses. However hard we fight, I give us a 50% chance of winning. The enemy has too many advantages. We must make careful preparations. Edelgard even trying to achieve. She wants to destroy the church so badly that she'll take on anyone who doesn't fall in line? I don't get it. I just can't believe she'd start a war over it. Not to mention using such nasty tactics to get her way. Could Captain Gerald's death have also been a part of her plan? Don't you go and die on me, Professor. Captain Gerald would never forgive you. The Empire is moving quickly. Edelgard must have been preparing for this for a while now. If you really think about it, she must have been planning for this even before you got the Sword of the Creator. Of course she was always a step ahead of us. We were blinded by the ball and the Battle of the Eagle and Lion and everything else. I refuse to go down like this though. So let's do something about it. What do you say? It's you and me, Teach. We've got this. an army, huh? I knew the kid had it in her. I mean, yeah, of course, I knew she'd be emperor eventually, but the more I think about it, the more surprised I am. I wonder who's gonna win. But would it really be okay for Edelgard to win? Huh? Professor? What actually happened last month? I can't keep up at all. Edelgard is the Emperor? And she's declared war against the Church? So now we're at war? What is going on? I really don't understand any of this. What should I do? Dear me. Maybe. Things must be pretty crazy in Fargus about now. My father must be beside himself. I don't get it. Why did Edelgard make enemies with the nobles? Ideals she believed in so much, she was willing to start a war over them? Those must be some lofty ideals, to say the least. Is that so? Once the Imperial Army reaches the monastery, we'll have no choice but to fight. What's going to happen to us? I believe you. With the knights on our side, and especially with you, Professor, I know we can do this! Maybe. The Empire's aggression cannot stand. But if we are going to attack them now, we must be honest with ourselves about our chances of success. It goes without saying that I will fight the Imperial Army with everything I have for as long as I am able. But House Gloucester's territory is adjacent to Imperial lands. Let us proceed with caution. Yeah. His Highness calls for the head of Edelgard. For me, that is cause enough to fight. Uh, 
His Highness would not say, but I can think of only one explanation. She must have been involved in the tragedy of Dusker. Six great noble families have declared their support for Edelgard. Of the other three, Lord Vestra was assassinated. Hubert, his son, will succeed him. Bernadetta's father, Count Varley, is under house arrest. His wife is now supporting Edelgard. And my father, he was stripped of his role as Prime Minister. As a result, House Eyre has lost all of its power, all of its lands. We have lost everything. I. I... what do I do? Pardon me. debts to Duke Geert of the Empire. He is the Minister of Affairs that are foreign. He is a friend of Edelgard. He is to her side. What should I be doing? really busy with assignments and getting ready for graduation but now now that things have turned out like this I guess there's nothing to do but fight Ugh. if I could go back to last month and throttle my carefree self now it turns out Edelgard is the flame Emperor and the new Adrestian Emperor and she's striking out against the monastery with the full force of the Imperial Army behind her we gotta beat her at her own game, for our sake as well as Lady Rhea's. What? That girl is starting an all-out war, isn't she? But an enemy is an enemy, no matter who they are. Don't let compassion for her get in your way. Uh, I don't normally have a problem jumping into a fight, but it feels strange going up against my father. We aren't especially close, but he's not an opponent I'd want to face. I'd almost rather fight a monster. I hope he's not part of the group coming to attack Garrig Mach. took longer than I thought. It's a good thing I had your help, Professor. Looks like we've got everything we came for. Time to head back to the monastery. To tell you the truth, I wasn't sure if the money that night gave us would be enough. We managed to scrape by, though. I'm glad those shopkeepers were willing to strike a few bargains. It's one of the few things I'm really good at. I've got a lot of experience living in the city. Money was tight for me, too. At least until Lenato adopted me into his family. 
Come to think of it, you were originally a mercenary, weren't you? I'm sure you've traveled all over Fodlin. That must have been a pretty different life from regular folks like me. It sounds a lot more exciting, though, traveling the world from conflict to conflict. But a mercenary's whole job is fighting, isn't it? Must be a pretty tough way to live. Wow, I guess you must get used to it. That's really incredible, though. Oh! I had no idea they sold this book around here. I haven't seen this one for ages. Lug and the Maiden of Wind. It's a well-known tale of chivalry in Fargus. Lug is the King of Lions. This book is full of his exciting adventures. I've loved this since I was a kid. It was what got me learning to read. Give me that book! Hey, creep. Don't touch the merch. What the? Somebody catch that thief. Cut him in half like my prices. Please, calm down, ma'am. You calm down, kid. If he gets away with that valuable merch, it'll be a huge loss for me. Here, allow me to compensate you. Huh? Are you serious, kid? I mean, no objections over here. But that sounds crazy. Don't you worry. That thief will be paying me back just as soon as I catch him. Head on back to the monastery, Professor. I'll take care of everything here. that the Flame Emperor was Edelgard all along. Flame's abduction? Geralt's murder? The turmoil in Remire Village? Whether or not she was the mastermind behind what happened, it at least seems like she was involved. And yet she was able to remain so composed while she was enrolled at the Officer's Academy. What does war with Edelgard mean for us, Professor? Does she even want that? I wonder why she'd think that. That's how it always goes, I guess. You never realize something can't be undone until you've done it. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> I hear the Alliance's territory will be in danger if we don't get rid of these Empire guys. If the Alliance is in danger, that means my sister's in danger too. There's no way I'm gonna allow that. It doesn't matter how many guys they throw at us. I'll beat them all. These muscles aren't just for show. But first, I gotta get some food. The most important nobles in the Empire are known for taking power from the previous Emperor, my father included. I didn't think it possible that the Imperial Princess could ascend the throne so easily. However, it seems that both my father and Kaspar's are supporting Edelgard. Having both the Minister of Domestic Affairs and Minister of Military Affairs on your side gives you total control over the Empire's military and finances. You must have been making preparations for quite some time without anyone noticing. Hi. I cannot believe our negligence allowed the Empire to invade. Edelgard probably gathered her soldiers in Garrig Mach, intending to do this from the start. Soldiers disguised as merchants and pilgrims to avoid suspicion, infiltrating the entire area little by little. They couldn't be better prepared. We'll have a tough time winning this one, I'm afraid. Really? Pardon me. Greetings, Professor. Something to report. Unexpected, isn't it? Apparently, this is the first time Garrig Mach has been invaded in its whole 995-year history. It's my job to protect this gate, so even if enemies come in droves, I will never let them through. I hope we both survive. Let's battle with all our might and pray we win this thing! have guessed it. War is profitable, but dangerous. I really don't like seeing people I care about out there mixed up in all this. Professor, I'm glad that I came to the Officer's Academy. I feel accepted here. I've learned so much. Honestly, I'm surprised at how much I've grown. So, I will not let the Academy be destroyed. It's important to me, and I will protect it. I feel braver just hearing you say that, Professor. We're gonna win this, Professor. Thanks. Mm -hmm. 